This was a study we did with some existing samples that we had from a, a, a prior study um, of overweight children. And we had some blood samples, which allowed us to look at the cotinine level in their blood. This is an objective way to assess whether they've been uh, exposed to secondhand smoke. And a high level of cotinine in the blood indicates a person who's actively smoking. We didn't see any like that, fortunately, because these are young kids. But we did find that a, a substantial proportion of them apparently had been exposed to secondhand smoke. There are three main findings. Um, one is that the children that were exposed to secondhand smoke had a significantly higher level of um, fatness. So they're all overweight, but the children who were exposed had larger waists, um, a higher percentage of fat in their body, and a higher um, weight to height ratio, what we call BMI. So that indicates that their obesity was perhaps a bit more severe, um, and that might be due to the exposure. We can't be sure. Another finding was that, um, and perhaps even more concerning, the children who were exposed did a little bit more poorly on a measure of cognitive ability. So it wasn't a huge difference, but they were lower on every single measure of cognition in the test. So it was consistent. Um, and so that, that's concerning because that means it's possible that the secondhand smoke exposure is actually impacting their ability to do well in school. The third finding was in a previous study, secondhand smoke exposure had been linked with diabetes risk. And um, of course, children now are, are coming down with type 2 diabetes. We used to call adult onset diabetes. We can't call it that anymore. Um, and I'm quite concerned about that, which is why I study overweight, overweight kids. In this study, we found the secondhand smoke exposure was not related to that kind of risk. And we looked at it a few different ways. Um, so that's, that's one thing that, that the secondhand smoke does not appear to be uh, aggravating. I guess it was the amount of children that were exposed and the relatively poor correspondence of the objective measure with the parental report of who is there a smoker in the household. Now, it may be that they're exposed to smoke outside the home, um, or it may be that the parent is simply not aware of the exposure that's occurring. So I was, I was a little bit surprised by that, and I'm, of course, more confident about the findings given that it is an objective measure rather than um, simply a self-report. I think Dr. Tingen said it best. Everything obesity does to you that's bad, secondhand smoke exposure makes worse. Children need fresh air, and when they go outside, they also get more physically active. So besides having better things to breathe, because um, indoor air is very polluted actually, even without smoke, um, go outside and, and move around a bit and get to, get to see some flowers and birds and, you know, might be good for them.